let's get going with the puzzles. So who has solution for the first one? So here we have a G pawn, which it promotes with check. So that's always tricky. Yeah, Bora, you got it. So this is quite a straightforward case where black does, white doesn't need to change front or anything. We can release the reserve knight right away. So the reserve knight is going for the c6 square and then we transfer the other knight to c7. Okay, like this. It could be c6, it could be d7. And we are just in time. So because the, a knight's pawn is always annoying, there's always a check on g1, or controlling these important squares, that's why the, the, the knight's pawn has to be further back in the Trotsky line. Okay, so that was to start us off with the puzzles. So here it's a knight's pawn. And the king is not exactly trapped in the corner, but it's near the corner. So the king is actually here on, on the B file, not along the edge of the board. So. So we cannot, if black promotes to a queen, we cannot use this square, b6. So we have to somehow work around that. So how do we start out with this puzzle? So there's a little twist here, avoiding the b6 square. Any ideas? So let's get started out. So knight c5 check. Let's say king to a7, then king to c7. So you might wonder what happens if king b8? And this doesn't matter much because so the, the black king is trying to prevent us from going to c7. But in cases like these, we can get the knight to c6. And then after that, get the king to c7. And then it's just uh, uh, another move order. So something like this. And how should we mate now with white? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Matt, and where do you want to, um, that's correct. So after B2, how does it continue? Yeah. So instead of using B6, we use C7, which is great. Um, So this king movement is a little bit unusual. It's maybe more natural to go to c7, but c8 still makes the king the same way. We're just leaving c7 for the knight. So, yep, a checkmate. Okay. Were there any questions to this one? It was still fairly straightforward to release the reserve knight, even though the king was not trapped in the corner, only 
near the corner. So if no questions, I will move on to the third puzzle. So this one, again, the king is not in the corner now, but it's near the corner. So actually, if we just look at this position here of these three pieces, so if black is to move here, the king is already trapped in the corner. So it depends on who's to move. But um, white moves first, and we are ready to release the reserve knight. How do we do it? Yeah. So, uh, Stanley, you're correct. And let's say about releasing the reserve knight. So, if the king is like this, not exactly trapped in the corner, there is always the choice between c5, d6. And taking into the account that the kings are here on the b file, um, d6 is the most natural square because then we get to a position like. Uh, trapped in the corner like this. So uh, if, the, if the white king were there and the black king there, it would be natural to aim for the c5 square. So there's a little bit of um, symmetry there. So in this case, uh, we aim for the d6 square because this is our next natural move. And then with the knight on d6, we trap the king. So knight f5 is correct. And then, see if king b8, then king b6. And now black does the same thing as, as we looked at before. He's trying to keep the, the white king out from this square. So what do we do then? We just make a switch of move orders and end up coming back to the same position. Yeah. Knight goes to c6. So this time we cannot go d4 because the pawn is there, but we go to c6. Black has only one move. And now we can go, go forward. Here it doesn't really matter because it's a d pawn. And check me. Yeah, if king b8, then king b6. Let's take that. King b8, then king b6. Let's see this checkmate. Black plays d3. And then the king is trapped in the corner now. So once we get to knight to c6, we have exactly the same position. Now we can also go d4. So it's basically the same. So now we are talking details, but um, in this position, you can say that black is forcing the white king to b6 here, because we have to keep this square under control, keep the king trapped. Whereas in the other position, a7 and this we had a choice but in the end it doesn't matter we could also go king a6 here and then we actually have we can we can mate on both squares in this position so but it doesn't matter but in other positions it might matter okay now uh, we are a little bit further away from the corner Say so at least before we had the king on b7, but here we have it on the back rank, but two squares away from the corner. So how do we do it now? And 
Now you, you get a sense with Knight's pawn. This pawn has to be really far back for, for white to succeed. So, so Knight's pawns, B and G are really uh, annoying. Yep, you've got it, Borough. We simply take it step by step. We would like to give this check here, but then we have to control this square first. So this is a step by step thing, but we simply take the black king into the corner and we have the time because the pawn is only on g6. So it goes like this. The king is trapped in the corner now. And now we just need to use this knight. And black is about to promote the check, but we have a checkmate. Okay, so that was straightforward too. We could release the reserve knight immediately. Um, no problems there, no changing in front of anything, but, but the black king was not in the corner, so that's why we had to do it like this. There are more complicated examples coming up. So let's see this one. So let's see if you solve this one. This is another example of um, changing knights, and but under different circumstances. Mm -hmm. Knight c7 check. I have to move. Let me see. Okay, and then what? That's a good question. Any difference if we go knight d6 instead of knight c7? In this position, let me see. No, actually not. So, uh, and I can tell you why. Because the key move here is you have to realize with the knight here and the king here, um, the king is actually trapped in the corner if it is black to move. And our goal is to trap in the corner. It's not there yet, so we have to make sure that uh, we can force it to the corner. So the key move here is knight b4. So here we have again this situation of two knights like this, and then we can um, change horses. Instead of b5, now it's, it's, it's b4. And we can, we can, I can show you afterwards. It doesn't matter if the knight is here or here, because the key squares for changing knight, and changing front when the king in the corner is this square and this square, with the king either here or here. Um, and you can see that the white knight can get to either of these two squares. So in the end, it doesn't really matter which knight move you make. So let's see why the king is trapped in the corner. Now we get the knight here, and you get the idea. Something like this. King is trapped in the corner, and now it's just about releasing the reserve knight. So this example was with the knight on c7. So let's finish this, and then let's do it again with uh, knight d6. It's good to get some practice in these positions. Um, so 96. Well, not in the sense that you're going to use it in your next tournament, but um, it's nice to know the technique. 
So let's see. Um, now we stay made the king. So let's see. There's a checkmate here. So let's try together if the knight went to d6. Just for the training of it. So knight d6 check. And b5. And then again, knight b4, king g8. So how do we make, how do we trap the king in the corner now? You can give me the moves in the chat. Because it, it's, it's not trapped yet. We, we still need to make a few moves to make it happen. So in that way, we can see that it, it actually makes no difference if we played knight c7, knight d6 from the beginning. So what is the key move here to trap the black king in the corner? Yeah, exactly. So if given the chance, the king will run back. So here we have a very typical movement. And then knight g7. So using this g7 square as transit, now we, where we take away this square, Let's say, this is, this is usually how we uh, change front, simply moving around g7 like this. Then we can get to either of these two squares. So we always use the g7 square as a transit square. And now e8 is protected, so the black king cannot run away. And now knight to e6. And here we go. Um, I don't think it really matters uh, where we go here because the, the knight is going to f6 and the other is going to mate. So yeah. Okay, so that was a little twist that so we have to, um, there's actually quite a few of these puzzles with uh, if you decide at some point to go through my 50 puzzles on the block, you will see there's at least a couple of more where you changing knight against a, a B or a G pawn simply to win time. So there, there is another way of losing a tempo. Okay. Let's look for the next one. So now the, the black king is in, in the lower part of the board. How do we do this? Is it straight forward or do we have to change front or anything? So let's calculate. Can we get the knight to c3 in time? And then, sorry, and then do the checkmate here, or do we have to be clever with trying to lose a tempo or whatever? Let's see king c3. And then you want to go king d2, I suppose. And king c2, king a2 would be the starting position. So I guess you want to do this and get the starting position with black to move. Well, now you can get it in with tempo, I guess. And then this is actually one move faster than the, the solution I have here. But it doesn't really matter because black is allowed to queen here. It doesn't help him. So because you played king c3 and lost the tempo, 
you were able to bring the knight in with a check in two moves, where otherwise I would use three moves. So you, you gained a tempo, but it doesn't really matter. So would king b3 be okay on the second move after king b1 with black? Let's see. So we're talking about uh, you want to play king b3. Am I right? And then king b1. Okay. Let's go back then. So king c3 first. Okay, I got you. Yeah, um, what I don't like here is you're giving up this square. Um, but you're talking about because the reserve knight is controlling this square. So you're talking about this. And then because of the reserve knight, you actually have this square control. So uh, yeah, th this is okay too. Even the way you did it, you, you played king c3. You actually won a tempo. In the end, it didn't matter because white's position was, was winning. So you can do this as well. Um, and now I believe you can get this knight in two moves and then go to a3 and then let's see. Check. This is our usual method. We stalemated the king. And then we, we again checkmated before black could promote. So, um, so which was an improvement, let's say. Uh, so let, let's show you why it is actually able to release this knight right away. Let's say, use three moves to get to c3. That's okay. Because uh, it's checkmate on b3. So we didn't have to win this extra tempo. So there are really a lot of ways to do this. And it's not unusual that there are more ways. But in some cases, there is only one way. So let's move on. So now the pawn is on f3 instead of f4. And the king is on a1. Mm -hmm. How do we do this? So we have no time to get this knight to b3. That would be three moves. Then you can get the knight to c1. But then it takes too long to get the other knight around because the pawn is only two moves away from promotion now. Yeah, Stanley, you're correct. King b3 and king b1. Yeah. So sometimes it's like this, that it's actually the reserve knight that releases and then trapping the king and then you, you, you kind of switch knights here. Um, and now we have the mate. Okay, so king b3 on move one was uh, the key move to get the king to b1. Okay. Let's see uh, the last one. So this one is actually, um, uh, Trotsky had another solution in his book, but I... Um, so the solution here is mine, but it's very logical. It's very similar to what we've already looked at. What is the winning idea? Well, I do give you two questions in this one. So if black moves first, what is the maiden for moves?
So we have, yeah, Matt, that is correct. So we have the same idea. Mm -hmm. Check and check on the edge. And now the king is stalemate. And now we just have to get the knight to f2, but we cannot block that pawn because he has to play g4 and then we checkmate. So we need to get this position. If we get this position with black to move, then it's winning. But unfortunately, it's white to move. So what's the idea to lose a tempo? So we need to find a way where we can triangulate the king. Let's see, if we look at the two white knights, they are creating this cage for the black king. So black can go back and forth. That's one, two, one, two. So we can triangulate, make it one, two, three. So, but we need to get a little bit away because the black pawn is taking up these squares. So, so we, we need to get out into open space before we can do a triangulation. And then we need to get back. So king f3, okay. And I go here. What, how do you continue then? Mm -hmm. Then I go king g1. Okay, king h1. So Stanley, how do you want to continue? Okay, King C3. There, there are many options here. You just need to find a place where you triangulate and then you have to, uh, yeah. And then let's just say D3 because you came from D3. And then it's black to move. So you went like this. So you basically did it on these three squares. I think you could have done it a little bit closer. I think it was possible to do it on these three squares, or you could have done it on these three squares, but it's fine, it works. And then it's black to move, and then we have the maiden four moves. Okay, guys, this was a very complicated endgame, complicated endgame, and um, but you you will get all the positions, so uh, you'll have the chance to have an extra look. But um, so I hope you got a good understanding of especially the Trotsky line. All these uh, releasing the reserve knight and mating um, that can easily be trained. And as I said, I put up these fifty puzzles on my blog. If you think that is fun to do, I will send the link. I think it's easier. So um, thank you for today. So that was it. And see you, many of you, next Thursday, where there will be four new classes. Um, so you can sign up by me, or you can sign up through the Marshall Chess Club. They will announce it very soon. OK, thank you. and. Uh, that's great. Um, let me get back to you, Bora. Um, okay, so um, see you everyone, bye.